Welcome in. I'd love to tell you today is a great show, but today is a terrible show. I have been exposed and I don't like it. I made a mistake and I was publicly outed on this episode, but we do answer a ton of your questions, get into so much good fantasy relevant information. Make sure you subscribe, subscribe to this channel so that you always have information when we go live. Enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. So many things just happened at the exact same time. Welcome into the show. That was maybe the worst open ever. Uh, the fantasy footballers back with you. All of our waivers, <laughs> all of our waivers were going through immediate, like when the button was pushed yeah. to start the show. But the highlight of the waiver wire in all of our leagues, without question, <laughs> just leave the building, Jason, because the highlight was Jason Moore. You know Jay him as the big shimmy. Jason yes. Moore is the winner yes, of the is. Zach Moss sweepstakes. Congratulations. Woo, give dude. me a crowd. Give me give me them claps. Oh, let me find that. Give me them claps. I don't know. How I, dare you? Oh, congratulations, Jason. How Zach dare you guys Moss. out me on this very big <laughs> podcast? Four bidders, but none better than Jason Moore. <sighs> that feels like such a waste of fun. Here's, here's what I'll say. In the this is a great start for a show. Oh, in, it defense, is. in defense of Jason, very little draft capital. You ended up Eckler, J.K. Dobbins. J.K. Dobbins obviously done for the season. <laughs> oh, yeah. Eckler, we don't know what the information is on his ankle. So you had to be aggressive. You had to go get someone. I did. And you got Zach Moss. And you outbid the number two uh, by up. ten. Shut up! Up. I, that's, I'm so upset when I oh, saw I didn't it. Know that part? Yeah, when I looked, I, I mean, so I'm putting 10, all these claims in. An extra ten percent, just so, set it on fire. The the Zach uh, Moss oh, for fifteen. I should bucks. never. I and should you know. never. What did I do? And you know. That means he's playing Zach Moss. Yes. You know? Oh, man. <laughs> yes, it's uh, the greatest day. <laughs> I'm going to cut him right now. I'm going to burn all 15. Oh, what did man. I do? I'm just – so here's what's going on. I'm in nine <laughs> leagues right now. It's too many. And in the league of record, it, which is the most important, I'm I'm in a, a terrible running back situation because, oh, as Mike said, I have very little Tell me about capital. it. <laughs> So I've got Eckler, who hopefully is fine, and then nobody behind him. So I had to, I just shotgun approached every potential starting running back, and I really assumed I was not going to get Zach Moss. He was just in the list, and I was so upset that I was the winner of Zach Moss. Oh, and you're man. right. When I saw that I grossly <laughs> overpaid for the guy who sucks, who I can't stand, I hate, I think he is not good at football and oh, will be man. worthless. He is now on my League of Record roster you are, for too much money, and I'm very upset. You are also the winner of Justice Hill. Yes, that one's good. So you put some running backs yeah, on this Yeah, you beat me by two roster. on that one, so that feels bad. Uh, you also were a play uh, – you had added Puka Nakua. I drafted Puka. Yeah, yeah, you did. And so you didn't have to spend up on that, so we don't have a number to share with the Foot Clan. But welcome to, uh, welcome to our live reactions <laughs> to our own leagues here on the Fantasy Footballers. We have oh, man. Hungry for More on today's show. We got news to talk about the Thursday night game, which has some start-sit decisions that are going to be uh, pretty difficult. I think at the running back position for for Philly, and then we have mailbag today as well. And Jason's he's wearing the Pity City shirt with pride. With pride today, which is which is wonderful. We built this. City. There we go. Oh, Get Jason's me in on that in graphic. graphic. Yeah. All right. But that's uh, it. Look, it, the city's a nicer place when we have a a higher occupancy. Yeah. Yeah, I will move in. Oh, you're no, you're gonna I, move no. in soon. No, I'll move in in a few weeks. Yeah, yeah. If we let you, yeah, yeah, we might we might close the doors by then. Look, that was a plague ridden city last <laughs> year. I'm okay taking a week or two to figure it out. Uh, please go to YouTube, subscribe to the show, click that bell. Mike goes live every Sunday with his uh, morning analysis, the last minute reaction to news, the starts and sits and inactives. You can catch him there and then all the shows over on YouTube. So do not miss that. 
Megalobowl, week one. Shout out to Pistol002, who is in the lead, 212 points for week one. And there's a new Dynasty podcast today as well, Overreactions and Bench Boys. Ooh. That's what so Dino is J- all about. Jason was on the Dynasty podcast. Yeah, it was a, a really good show. We, we highlight some uh, great players that can level up and some of the most important storylines and how they uh, affect the long-term outlook of several different teams. <laughs> Zach Moss. I'm so I'm oh man I'm just it, upset by it I really am I, it I feel so good because you are starting him I don't even know if there's I'm no start way him. you're not starting him. I don't I it's I know your team who's your other running back it doesn't even matter well he, no Tyler he can play, Algier he can play oh, okay Tyler that's right Algier. that's right or I also got Justice Hill so yeah I got options but you you have a flex to fill too I do you're gonna flex Zach Moss I got Puka in there right now okay all right maybe, I just wasted money maybe on you Zach can Moss. bench, bench him did. all right we're moving on. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. I found it especially difficult not to spend up on players in week one, Uh, especially like making like I thought about going all in on Josh Kelly. I thought about going all in on Justice Hill. And then I try what I ended up doing was kind of just deciding this week. Like, I put in some bids, but I knew they weren't going to win. And just, I wanted that fab for, for week two, week three. It all sure. feels like I want it right in front of my face right now, but I don't know. Injuries are going to happen every week, so yeah, every, I didn't win every, out on that. And Justice Hill's a tough call, man. Yeah, it, he really is. He could he, be... He could be a great value. Yeah, the, yes. The the fact that he it got goal line work. Like, it wasn't just Gus Edwards out there. This is a It's a different Ravens offense. I think that they both will split, but the fact that Justice Hill is the better pass catcher b- between him and Gus Edwards, we uh, w- J.K. I think had three, yeah, three in- catches in his short uh, appearance in Week One. So if if that's going to happen, if you're going to get some targets and the option of goal line work, then Justice Hill it could work out. Absolutely. All right, hungry for more time. We're looking at players that performed last week, and we believe will continue. To I'll, perform. I'll hop right in here because I got the shirt on and it's yes. for a reason. Do we got the play the play the thing? Oh, wait. We built this oh, no, that's the oh, one with all three. Uh, sorry, Andy. Andy. I'm that's sorry. Not good. I'm talking about Andy's Michael. hungry for more. Michael Pittman Jr. <laughs> I am hungry for more of him. He is a good football player. The reason that Mike and I fought over him last year was because of the talent and mm-hmm. the opportunity of being the clear cut one for that team. What that team was last year was a dumpster fire. Was was an ill coached. You know they got rid of Frank Reich early. They hired Jeff Saturday, who had no idea what he's doing, and they used Michael Pittman in a way that was irrelevant for fantasy. I, I mean, he was clearly the one. He was talented, but he it was just like, hey, Pittman, go walk two yards out there, and then I'll throw you the ball. That was what they did over and over. And now, in the first game with Shane Steichen. And Anthony Richardson, we see 11 targets. We see downfield targets. We see two red zone targets, including one inside the five. Last year, there was one inside the five target over the final nine Jeff Saturday games. So this is a utilization of a talented player in a situation where it's him and scraps that I think I am very excited for Michael Pittman. I have always believed in the talent, and if the coaching staff utilizes him in the right way, he he should be I, I think he'll be good rest of the season. Like I'm bought in from just week one. And I believe last year he had a good week one. So you he know did. May, maybe this is just what he does. Maybe he's Sammy Watkins uh reincarnated. But uh I the utilization and the way that they used him uh is what really uh has me hungry for more. Okay. That makes sense. I'd love to see it happen. Uh, I was pretty excited about the draft day value of Pittman just because the pendulum had swung so far. But Mike, I know you had brought up the concerns about the rookie quarterback. Yeah, 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 absolutely. The rookie quarterback, and that still remains a concern. But at least one week in, it, it looked like he was Richardson was okay. All right, I'm going with Puka Nakua. Yes. Uh, there are, you know, I think I saw some reaction yesterday that you know, the talk about Drake London, the talk relative to Puka Nakua, it was too extreme. It was too reactionary. Uh, you know that. It wasn't Drake London won't have any good games and Puka will only have good games. The storyline was more related to my confidence 
in the quarterback and the situation for Puka Nakua. 15 targets as a rookie in week one. Not just 15 targets, but delivering on those targets with a 40% target per route run. He looked the part. He won't be displaced when Cooper Cup does return. If Cooper Cup does return, which he should, but please, please return. But Cooper. people, I mean, he was drafted like a player that was going to be there week one. He wasn't, and we don't know how long that's going to be. And it's just more weeks for Puka Nakua and Matthew Stafford to build a rapport. Tutu Atwell, Van Jefferson, they are not alphas. They are not capable of being targeted 10 to 15 times a game. I think Puka just fits the mold for what Matthew Stafford is looking for, and and I want those targets. And I know it's not going to be 15 every week. Sure. But I don't think this defense is going to, you know, best case, middle of the pack. And and I'm excited to see what Puka can do. So I'm, I'm certainly hungry for more. I wish he had been available in our waiver wire so that I could have spent up on him. It wasn't the case. Uh, he went for over 50 buckaroos, I believe, in our uh, in the Megal Bowl. Okay. In your league, yeah? In my league, yeah. yeah I I'd, I'd bid 45 thinking I could get him. He went for 54, and I think he's here to stay. So definitely hungry for more with Puka. Yeah, it's interesting. Did Sean McVay find his new Robert Woods? Uh, we will see. And I want to highlight Elijah Moore, who uh, new Cleveland Brown this year. Had, it's in his third season. He's had a very odd career arc. He had year one where he looked like he was about to be, he was going to be like the next big thing for the New York Jets. Gets hurt, misses the second half. They draft Garrett Wilson, but it's no, the confidence in Elijah Moore remains sky high. Like this guy was, he looked the part. He was all over the field. He wasn't just a slot wide receiver. Then year two, something strange happens behind the scenes. He gets doghoused. They, uh, basically, they sit him down, say, no, we're, we don't want you on this team. Then they trade him over to the Cleveland Browns. And then in week one, which, again, if you didn't see the game, it was a rainy game, uh, which led to really poor fantasy output for the Cincinnati Bengals and lower output for the Cleveland Browns. They, they were better uh, than the Bengals, but it was still low. And in that time, seven targets turned into, which that's nice, it turned into three for 43. He had two rushes. So they were using him as a gadget player. He ended up with in that matchup. It was a 24% target share. And the question is, like, how will how will he be utilized with with Amari Cooper? Amari Cooper ended up he got banged up in that game, left for a little bit, but he still played. He, he played the whole game, but the snaps were way down. I don't think we've had an update yet, Kyle. You can look for that. I don't think we've had an update on Amari Cooper. They haven't. I haven't seen anything, and it's just. He's got a matchup against the Pittsburgh Steelers where Ayuk uh, and company just destroyed their secondary, and Elijah Moore is someone who I think can thrive uh, in that type of a matchup. So he's very interesting in uh, – he's very intriguing in a full-point PPR that could be a flex player. All right, that was Hungry for More presented by Uber Eats. With Uber Eats, get anything delivered. Well, almost anything. Running backs? No. 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 Flapja well, Flapjacks? Yeah. Baby backs? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, order, yeah. Order now in the app. Product availability may vary by region. See app for details. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. All right, Deontay Johnson expected to miss up to four weeks. Actually, I the report I saw was at least four weeks. Yeah. With the hamstring injury. And like Jason said yesterday, it could linger on. So it's nasty, but not not nastier than Zach Moss. It's nasty. You can pick up Allen Robinson uh, and and get a spot start there, potentially, Calvin Austin. All right, Kenneth Gainwell, this one's really important. He was listed as a did not practice two straight days. And uh, according to Eagles beat reporter Jeff McClain, Gainwell is trending towards not being ready from what he is hearing. We will talk about the Thursday night preview and the other running backs available, but uh, certainly would be disappointing with Gainwell getting 18 opportunities yes, in week one very, and a better matchup for him than New England on Thursday night. So uh, you could end up, a quick reminder on that, like if you have him and he gets marked inactive, throw him on that IR before mm -hmm. the game starts so that you have an extra roster spot to sign somebody through the weekend. 
there's nothing worse than when a when an oh, out player oh, man. has his game start and you forgot to move him out and you just limit yourself on picking up an extra player. Always be aware of that. Uh, Evan Hull is on IR with a knee injury for the Colts. He is a rookie running back. He was going to factor into the oh, hodgepodge yeah. of not Jonathan Taylor. That's right. Zach Moss time, baby. Oh, man. <laughs> it is. It is Zach Moss time this week. I know the Houston what do they Texans. Say, a, a Rolling Stone gathers no moss. But, uh, yeah, but if it's not moving very yeah. much, it He's will. Got tons it of will moss gather on him. <laughs> so much moss. He's got so much moss. But then is he slippery? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> can we bring back the? Uh, oh my gosh! Can we bring back the classic? Do we no. have that? No, there's there's no drop for uh, Zach Moss. Oh oh, I mean, the, the tuba. Yeah, yeah I'm looking for oh. it. It's been buried. The Joik Bell tuba. I, I thought I, you were talking about I this can't net find bit it. of information. Mm. No. Uh, yeah, There's. we'll see how he performs. Tariq Cohen. I Just just a shout out. What? The yeah. dinosaur hunter? <laughs> uh, he is planning to sign to the Carolina. <laughs> had you not seen Carolina no. Panthers practice squad. I had not seen this. I thought he retired forever ago. No. Well, so. he did, but he maybe he's making a comeback. He's back. Yeah, that's exciting. All right, that was today's News and Notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. You guys ready to talk about the Thursday night game? Yep. Thursday night breakdown. I'm I'm sad I didn't find the tuba. I missed the tuba. Broom, boop, 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 boop. Good old Joy Bell. All right, we are looking at Minnesota traveling to Philadelphia, taking on the Eagles, the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Philly minus seven. The over-under is 49. Uh, the records okay. here, Minnesota is 0-1, having lost to Tampa and Philadelphia. They held on. They won, but it wasn't pretty. No. But you know what? That's That's better than what the Bengals did. Oh, lose you know, terribly? high expectations and like you come out and you have a rusty week one, but you still win. That's nice. So we have Minnesota who got beat. Big, big underdogs here. The implied point total for Philadelphia is 28. Minnesota's is 21. You Did you guys see the, the video of Justin Jefferson at the end of that game sitting on the bench? I did not. Looking like. Uh, I imagine he was not happy. Super he, happy. He, he was, he was really he looked quite depressed on the yeah. bench. So last year, Eagles won twenty-four to seven in this in this matchup from week two last year. Hertz had three hundred plus passing yards, two rushing touchdowns, a passing touchdown. So, what did you see from Minnesota that in in week one? And and are we are we on our way to what you would call maybe a uh, a rubber banding back to maybe where they should have been last year with all those one score victories. Yeah, the the one score victory it certainly bit him in the butt in week 1. The the Vikings were uh, I mean the the Bengals was very disappointing, but it made sense. I mean, you're you're out there in the Joe Burrow hasn't really done anything in in months. The rain, he couldn't play. The Vikings were at home and they looked incredibly disappointing. The uh, Madison was the full-time running back, 73% of the snaps, 15 opportunities. He did score a touchdown, so the, the fantasy output wasn't bad, but it was not great. Now, his terms 11 of... 11 for 34. Yeah, 11 for 34 on the ground, but it was like the whole team. I mean, I, I, you had Justin Jefferson, who was okay, because, look, he's a true number one, and you had the really exciting, exciting Jordan Addison touchdown. Yeah. But they just, like, they didn't... They barely put up any points against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who they should have at home scored at least two more times. Like the, the way that I envisioned what the, the the Vikings' offense would be, so it was it was extremely disappointing that output. They have some offensive linemen who are we're trying to see if they're going to be ready to go or not. And, and I mean, Alexander Madison will be okay-ish because he'll still catch some passes but the uh, this matchup is brutal and the, the 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 thing that I'm watching the most here is can we cut the crap with the rookie like let Jordan Addison play he played on 56 percent of the snaps KJ Osborne played in front of him 
And yet, ninety-one percent of the snaps for KJ Osborne. And Jordan Addison showed you in fifty-six percent of the snaps, he is your number two wide receiver. Put him out there; you have a better chance of scoring touchdowns, which means you have a better chance of winning the game if Jordan Addison is on the field. So that's that's the my biggest question is: Do they cut the crap and put the best two players out there? Oh, it's not a question. This will happen. This is but exactly, it, but, it, but, but it doesn't happen this week. I think it. Stair steps up this week, and the following week he'll be the full-time wide receiver too. This was expectation, right, coming in. Yes. Jordan Addison was a my guy. I said those first few weeks, they're going to bring him along slowly. 56% of the snaps. He still had a great game. Turned it into both him and K.J. Osborne got six targets apiece, even though K.J. Osborne was on the field so much more. K.J. Osborne missed some passes he should have caught. He turned in 31 total yards where Jordan Addison was good. So I, I do think this game, Addison is on the field more. I'm really curious what the Eagles' defense is like because I think we were all, at least I'll speak for myself, I was surprised how much production Mac Jones and yes. the Patriots' passing game was able to come up with against this Eagles' defense. And so this, yeah. this will be really interesting, a good passing attack. Will will they continue to to put up yards against the Eagles? Yeah, I would be much more excited to try Addison out and then obviously you're playing Jefferson and even Hawkinson, who had nine targets and to me would be a, a trade target with that level of, of volume. A lot more excited about those guys going up, up against the Eagles secondary without James Bradbury this week than I would Madison, who you're probably stuck playing, but he's going to face not only Fletcher Cox, but he's going to face Jalen Carter. And if you watched him last week, them big boys, you understand why he should have been the number one pick in the draft, potentially. And what a steal for the Eagles! You know there was complaints, lots of complaints last week about Ramondre Stevenson. Well, you know it had a lot to do with this Eagles interior line, and they're going to be a force this year. Mm -hmm. uh, but like you said, you're you're going to play Madison because you know running backs they don't grow on trees, and you drafted him to, to play him. But it it just might not be one of the weeks that. He's a key cog in your victory. You, well, yeah, I, I agree with that. I, uh, if I had to guess how this game is going to go, I think it will be a beatdown. I, 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 I believe that the injuries right now that we don't know for sure who will be playing on the offensive line for the Vikings, but they are, uh, they have two injured starters basically right. that we we're not sure if they're going to go. And if they don't go oh, with gosh. that pass rush, I really think that the Vikings are going to struggle. Certainly in the run game, uh, I, I don't expect big games for any Vikings offensively obviously those three pass catching options I think you should still play for fantasy purposes but just not expecting huge things and then the running game for the Eagles like yeah that's the big the big debate if it's a shellacking you know if, if they go in and they sack Cousins you know five times and have them throw two interceptions and they're up 14 20 points in this game the way that I could see it going then you would expect there is a running back on the Eagles that will be very valuable for fantasy. So, who is it? So, I yeah, mean, that's. I was really excited about this matchup for Gainwell with the opportunities and the fact that he might miss is hugely disappointing. There, there was a really kind of ridiculous quote coming out of Nick Sirianni regarding DeAndre Swift, saying that basically sometimes. There will be some games <laughs> so where weird. he will be in a role to carry the load. Okay. We we if we don't have Gainwell, we should have Penny, Boston Scott, and DeAndre Swift. But trying to project, I mean, I would play Swift <laughs> above those for sure. Yes, and but Boston Scott, I don't think is playable, and Rashad Penny is a dart throw in the. Zach Moss category. Yeah. He's the you put him in your captain spot on your showdown lineup and and hope that something wild happens. What is your confidence in actually starting DeAndre Swift? Last week, twenty nine percent of the snaps, three total opportunities, a disgusting drop across the the middle of the field. Without Gainwell, I'm happy playing him in this okay, game. Okay, so yeah. you're you do you you put him right there into an RB two spot. I would. I think I'd play him over Madison. I wouldn't go that if far. If Gainwell right. wasn't there. Yeah, I, I I wouldn't go that far. I understand I, it. I yeah, just think he's guaranteed to have a significant role. That is the one of the three that I know that is going to be the case. But it, I, it's it's a scary 
it's See, a I don't, scary proposition. I don't think that that's a guarantee in the sense that if they hop out to an early lead and they're trying to run the clock out more, I could see that being more of a Rashad Penny situational role than the DeAndre Swift uh, back archetype. So I, I would I would stay with uh, Alexander Madison. However, I would start, you know, like the aforementioned Zach Moss, who has a good matchup and has good opportunity. I, I would start DeAndre Swift over him. I would start DeAndre Swift. Um, probably over – if Gainwell's out, I think he's a good flex play. Obviously, you're not going to play him in the flex on Thursday night. You'll throw him in your RB slot. But I think he is a worthy play Would if Gainwell's out. Would you play him over James Conner at home against the Giants? No. no. James Conner no. got a hundred, actually over 100% of fantasy points from the running yeah, back position. Did you hear this, Mike? It, it broke our system because – we have a market share system mm -hmm. that calculates percentage, like yeah. percentage of fantasy points produced at the position. Yeah, unfortunately, James Conner had more than one hundred percent of the total fantasy points earned, because, <laughs> because the only other negative. running back on the roster to <laughs> score fantasy points scored negative fantasy points. Was that Ingram? It was no. It yes, was it Keontae was. Ingram. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, weird. So literally, our uh, Andy Schneider, one of our devs, walks out and goes. What do I do here? I was like, you're gonna have to max that at a hundred percent. But uh, okay, uh, uh, DeAndre Swift or Dalvin Cook at Dallas. DeAndre Swift. Okay. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. That's it's right. It's right in line Dude, with that's that, that's a. I might try Swift. I might try the matchup. Yeah, I, I would go Swift. So so listen. <laughs> what if what if Kenny Gainwell is active? Uh, are you are you no, are you going to play him with the the? I mean, it's a possibility. If Kenny Gainwell ends up active, I mean, it's not uncharacteristic it, for a team to sit a guy on a short week if he's banged up and then just play him. Yeah, if, if he's active, I'm going to stay away from this whole game because I would imagine including not, Gainwell. Yeah, including Gainwell. I, I would imagine that they're not going to give him the same market share and percentage with hurt ribs that they gave him week one. They'll they'll probably have more of a committee, and in that situation, I just don't want to play with it. What do you do with Dallas Goose Dirt? Uh, I'll allow it. You play him. Yeah, you play him. You you have years of seeing him as a good uh, receiving tight end. Uh, he goosed and it stunk. But both of these tight ends, I think, are great trade for targets. TJ Hawkinson and Dallas Agreed. Goddard, they both disappointed last week. They're both good tight ends that will be successful. Top, top five, top six tight ends for sure on the season. So you can get them now. I agree. I did you guys see there were some rosters that had Aaron Rodgers, Drake London, T. Higgins, oh, yeah, and Dallas course. Goddard. And of it course was like, it had to have happened. How do you not walk away from the, the sport? <laughs> I mean I I don't know. Brighter days are ahead. Yes, they are. It's week, a guarantee. It's, it's, one, it's, it's, it's one week. One week. Yeah. It's one week. All right. Uh quick break and back with some mailbag. All right, one one thing that we have not brought up that I'll I'll bring up before we get into the mailbag is just the idea of trading high on players that you might have believed overperformed, right? We say mm -hmm. we yeah, say hungry course. for more because we believe bright days are going to continue for those players. But there are players that had kind of outlandish week ones. Like I I don't know about you, I'd love it to be the case. I don't think Tua is the number one quarterback on the year. No. No, I think the matchup with the Chargers was perfect. I would be trying to capitalize on Tua for sure. He he plays New England, Denver, Buffalo, the Giants the next four weeks. Not that he won't be able to perform in those games. I think he's going to be great. I mean, we saw this last year. We saw him nuclear, absolutely destroying guys, being like a top. The 58 top, points against Baltimore. Yeah, top three quarterback back to back to back weeks. And then we saw him completely shut down and just be irrelevant. I think you're going to have hot and cold with him. I don't think he's going to be the type of quarterback that is in every single week or 80% so would... of the time uh, be be a you know top six quarterback. So the strategy there, just for those listening, that I take with those situations is you take Tua and you, you take another player that had a nice week one from your bench and you go try to trade up at the quarterback position. You know, we had a lot of we had some duds, right? We had the Joe Burrow duds. Oh, they all all we, the top quarterbacks, Lamar Jackson, duds. yeah, Herbert, Allen, like those guys. 
Do you believe all four of those you'd rather have rest of the season I than would, Tua? I would rather have all of those more than Tua. That's a, that's a hard thing to do. Maybe not with Allen. Maybe not with Herbert. But it's harder to do with, like, you know, Burrow, who has seven points. It's hard to do with Fields. Fields yeah. is the hardest. Fields is the hardest because he looked – Really, really bad Looked throwing bad. the ball. He did. But don't um, don't worry, guys. A new report just came out this morning. They believe they were maybe a little too conservative with him. What? <laughs> I, I will say this. I, <laughs> I I mentioned it on yesterday's episode, but... what Don't they make halftime adjustments in the NFL? I am happy with the fact that last season, we watched this coaching staff completely change, self-evaluate and go, we are sucking. Let's change what we're doing. <laughs> Is that what they said? Oh, it's, yeah. They, we like, are sucking. And uh, so I, I, I have some confidence that they will self-evaluate because there were there were there were issues with Justin Fields and his play and his his reads and holding on to the ball and then you know yada yada. But there were also big problems with the actual offensive system, the calls they gave him two designed runs the whole game. Come on, you like use the 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 skill set yes. you have. So self-evaluate and uh, make some corrections. And bench Chase. It's Claypool. disturbing that those games. Can yes. <laughs> Sorry. Is to me it's disturbing that those games can still happen twenty eight starts into your NFL career. Sure. Blame the coaching, blame fields, blame all blame it uh, it's, all. It's it everyone's a, it was fault. a huge disappointment. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't just the coaching staff. Uh it was also Fields. Yeah. And and yeah, that would be like Tua with the week he had, Justin Fields with the week he had. Oh, I don't man. think I would make that move. I don't think I don't think I have the I courage. I think the to line do that. is right above Fields. There. I I have the courage to do it. If I had Tua, I would go off him for Fields straight up. You know what else you have the courage to do? What is that? Sign Zach Moss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so that, that didn't take courage. That took. Can stupidity. we get him a T-shirt, Brooks? Can uh, we get him a Moss T-shirt? Which is like a jersey. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh I, I, yeah. Okay. Oh, it's even better if he delivers for you. Because oh, then you, I, become, yeah, what do you, do? you become a fan. No, it w won't happen. Yeah, he can't will. deliver for me. He's not good enough. He shouldn't be on my roster. <laughs> did, did one of you log in and put this claim in? Did you guys have? I wish system? I was that smart. You oh, were the only man. one smart enough to do that. Yeah. Oh, what did I do? Oh, it's great for the show. All right. We're hopping into the mailbag. 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 Ooh. Oh, man. Oh, we can get you a Gildan Zach Moss shirt. Oh, that's about right. That is where extra scratchy he belongs. <laughs> I know how you like your shirts. <laughs> extra <laughs> scratchy. Oh, get bodied Gildan, get bodied Jason. Uh, they will keep you warm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, oh, yeah. no better sleep thick. shirt. Yeah, because they are, the, 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 the material is about two inches thick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think if you start him and you get a W, you got to wear that shirt. I will do everything in my power to not start him. Okay. Into the mailbag we go. Instagram oh, question. Should I already stop caring about draft capital with players like Akers, Garrett Wilson, Cooper Cup? So To me, it's yes and no. I Yeah, I mean, I think we're probably going to say the same thing here. Uh, I would say absolutely yes. Yes, yes, yes. Forget about draft capital. What you don't forget is the reasons behind the draft capital. Like draft capital does not matter anymore. You drafted a fantasy tight end. Fantasy draft capital. Yeah, yes. Fa fantasy. You know where where you drafted him. Oh, you took this guy in the sixth round, and there's a guy on waivers. You know that went undrafted. Like it, it doesn't matter. It does not. The second the draft is over, draft capital doesn't matter. But what you can't forget about is if a player was drafted in the third round. That's almost for sure because most people think he's talented. Most people think his situation is good. So one bad week is something you can't overreact to. But especially when it comes to waivers and trades, I, people make such a mistake by caring so much about, oh, I drafted this guy three rounds earlier. I don't want to trade him for that guy that was three rounds later. What does it matter? Just trade for the better player. I Look. had to make that call on the waivers this week. I mean, it's, that's the harder decision. It's like I spent a pick on Devon A-Chain. But then I, I don't really – I haven't been able to construct the path to me wanting him on my roster for the next five weeks. He might be good after that. I, you know, maybe something happens. But Ahmed has moved up the depth chart. Jeff Wilson will return. Mostert is the starter. And what am I getting out of that? Is he going to win the job? Like, it sucks because I invested the pick and I was excited when I made the pick. Sure. I was like, oh, sweet. I picked him up. 
He's going to have a chance. He ends up being a healthy scratch. I've got other players that can help me right now. Those are tough calls to make emotionally. So let's do a follow-up here from Twitter. It's uh, from a feller named Derek. Should I trade away Garrett Wilson for T. Higgins in a full PPR? Is that the one that you were reacting to when you yeah. when you saw? I mean, that is – Because – Yes. The answer is yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the answer is yes, and I'm sorry. I, I don't know if there's a player I love more than Garrett Wilson. I respect the man. I respect the player – I feel for the situation that it's, keeps repeating itself. I pray for him. <laughs> I mean, I, I want well-being. Zach Wilson to be good. I really do. Yeah, it's that that storyline would be amazing. The mm. redemption of of Zach Wilson with this team. Yes. I will say the the public sentiment right now on Zach Wilson is Wilson, do not squander this cuz you have you went from a catastrophic draft pick that derails NFL franchises for years to this opportunity in front of you. And while while we're unsure that he will succeed, everyone is rooting yeah. for Zach Wilson. Which it, you never thought you, could no, no, be no. Which was the complete opposite. Like last year it was, ah, Zach Wilson sucked again, got him. And now everyone's like, come on, Wilson. You can do it, buddy. You can do yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, last time he was on the field, he, everyone's just rooting for his failure. You, you watch him drop back to pass, and you're just going, come on, do it. Yeah. Do it. Throw that to the defense. Now, everyone's on his side. Who doesn't want to see him succeed? I agree, and we also want to see Garrett Wilson succeed. So I mean, we're not going to. Don't hear what I'm not saying. <laughs> we're not going to see him succeed, but, like, totally rooting for you. Go get him, buddy. Yeah, it's. Uh, I agree with what you said yesterday or the day before about getting Flacco. No. No. <laughs> It was yesterday, and you were talking about Robert Sala's comments, and he's reiterated them multiple times. Like, he has taken the leadership proper approach of, he's our guy. We're not getting someone else. Yeah. We're not looking for someone else. That's our quarterback. He left out the part where they looked at every veteran available, and they realized that that's not a go-to move. And then, Zach Wilson's our guy. Yeah. But, yeah, I yeah. would trade away – Come I on, think Carson. I would trade him for T. Higgins. I would trade Garrett Wilson for T. Higgins. I would and as well. But it, I don't think Wilson's dead. I really don't. I don't think Wilson is is dead. I think he's a wide receiver too. No, Higgins rest is, of season. Higgins is good. Higgins is really, really good. And if uh, Higgins is another uh, absolutely phenomenal trade for target. After you goose in week one, people are upset. I mean, every league you should be going and trying to see if you can cheaply acquire T Higgins because Which, that if you watched those passes uh Kyle Borgignoni yes. put it on his uh his Twitter you got to check him out he had eight targets pretend wink wink, wink. yeah one he had two, two at the most two at the most yes. targets that were catchable one catchable target one that he could have caught he's good he's tough and then six that were I mean not like the, how do you even charge you those as can't targets? charge those as targets they're they're nowhere near him like not like Oh, he couldn't reach it. No, it's like he doesn't try to reach it because the ball is over over there. Yeah, we call those Mariota targets. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Ryan writes in on Twitter, says, uh, I drafted Bijan and Algier. How long can I ride oh. that? How long can I ride that wave? Uh, I think the whole season. It, it might be. You, you are be. not going to get a game from this team where you're not getting enough volume in that running game. And it's it's set up like – it's like how we view Shanahan's running game. It's The volume's going to be there, and you're going to have success with it. You may have some bumps along the way, but I, I think it could be the whole season. It could be, but, I mean, you're, you're also – your ceiling is limited. I mean, you're, yes. you're going to have games where – uh, I mean, it might be this week. All of a sudden, Bijan Robinson jumps up to 75% of the snaps or something while he was a top 10 pick for a reason. And if that is the case, then I mean, you're, yes, you are you are collecting the entirety of the, the Atlanta Falcons running game, which maybe you are. Uh, Cordero Patterson returned mm -hmm. to practice today, and that could be another uh, wrinkle in the fantasy value. You're talking about for, the Joker? I'm talking about the Joker. Could be a problem for Tyler Algier. That remains to be seen. But even though you're capturing the whole pie, it it might be very small from uh, like every other week. So yeah, I I wouldn't want to roll these guys yeah. out the whole season. I just <clears throat> I think Tyler Algier will be extremely involved 
from week he's one. He's a good player. <laughs> Absolutely. From week one to the end, he will be involved. Um, it won't always be as good as last week, and I do think that when they are in closer games, you're going to see more Bijan. It, 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 the luxury of having Algier out there to spell Bijan when you're up two scores is a lot easier than, oh my gosh, we're down by seven, it's the fourth quarter, we got to put our best guy on the field. That'll happen more in those games where you'll see Bijan out there. And it'll be annoying as a B, as a Bijan manager to not get to see him out there as much as you, you want. I mean, when you when you have Saquon, he's on the field more than anybody else, right? Like he's out there for almost every snap in the entire game. It's not fun to watch. I mean, there's a lot of running backs that are like that right now where, you know, Eckler came off and obviously he got hurt and stuff, but like seeing another back out there, it's tough. Yeah. Um, just have CMC. And just we don't do know. That. I mean, do, did we get to see a real two-minute drill situation there in Atlanta? No. Because that's something that well, you can be surprised. Did you see Latavius Murray? Yeah. Latavius for the, Murray yeah, for became the, the two-minute yeah, guy the game. Yep. for the Bills. That was really interesting. I mean, there's a bunch of those situations that have that have, have cropped up this week. We saw Mike Boone popping in for Houston. So teams put these packages and practice these packages, and I don't know. I mean, maybe it's Bijan. Maybe it will be Bijan, but it could be Algier in those situations too. All right, Instagram question from Nathan RG90 says, level of worry, 1 through 10, with Geno Smith. I have the stack with Metcalf. I'm going to put my worry at 6. Okay, so you are concerned. I'm concerned because I don't think you the, the offensive line situation will be solved quickly. And I don't have they enough long-term trust with Geno Smith to not be a little bit concerned. Yeah, because he's not a bona fide guaranteed top five option. He's a fringe starter that you took at the end of your draft, and you might need to move on if you don't like what you see. He needs to be protected. Like That's the type of quarterback that he is. And they the, the Seahawks made a low-key move. Uh, they brought in... 41-year-old they, Jason Peters. They brought in 41-year-old Jason Peters, which usually is a sign that they know something that they have not told the public yet about one of their offensive linemen. So that that's that's the concern. But my concern with Geno Smith and the Seattle offense, if their offensive line is healthy, is is a two. But if you're telling me those the, those linemen are actually injured and going to miss time, then the then the worry meter would jump up to like an eight. Detroit, yeah, Carolina, I, New York. Detroit AKA Aiden Hutchinson. Right. Who he was he was shut down enough by the Chiefs in week one thanks to no rules for their uh right tackle. Their right tackle that he was allowed to do whatever he wanted. Um if you're telling me that the Seahawks will be missing their starting right tackle and they're gonna have kind of a backup uh emergency plan against Aiden Hutchinson, yeah, I, I worry about Geno Smith this week. And until that offensive line is good, I'm I'm with Andy. I'm I'm a greater than a, a five. You know, a lot of a lot of places we talk about. Uh, you draft Geno and you draft uh, Anthony Richardson. Well, good. Put put Richardson in if you've yep. got another good option. Th this is the time. Okay. And um, if you're worried and you're worried about this week, are you going to drop him to pick up someone like I don't know Jared Goff? Yeah, absolutely. You you don't you don't need to hold on to uh, Gino. I, at this point in time, he is now a streamer. If you're in a single quarterback league, it's fine to take to just have one quarterback on your roster and just play the waiver wire every week. Both Jared Goff and Brock Purdy, uh, they were they were both in our streams. Yep. Right. Yeah. And they uh, flash forward to next week. I bet they're in that list again. Uh, Goff, uh, his roster percentage might be too high. For us to really call him out, but both Goff and Purdy have a uh, three or four week. I can't remember off the top of my head, but a, they have a stretch of games where they're going to be great top tier streamers. It didn't help Geno Smith to have Lockett get banged up, and is Lockett still in? No, he, he came he back. Re in he the returned game. to the game. Okay, yeah, he still. Just, I guess he played eighty eight percent of snaps. It was just a bad game for yeah, dude, everyone. I mean, it was, that what was, was the, an awful second half. Do we? Yeah, the the number was. Gino had like a hundred and fifteen or so passing yards in the first half. Not not elite, but that's that's not a problem. You can go in the second half and and have a good game. And then the second half, the Seahawks group had uh, very few yards. So it was once the lineman left, it was a huge problem. All right, let's let's close with this one. 
because I want to know the answer from you guys. Instagram, OG Cheese Man. <laughs> what is the outlook for Dalvin Cook now that Rodgers is gone and we saw Brees Hall emerging? What do you think? Uh, the Rodgers injury I don't think is is all that bad. Uh, really? for Dalvin Cook, yeah, the because scoring of the New York Jets offense absolutely goes way down. To total touchdown opportunities does go down, but I think that you have an identity for the Jets now of sure. defense and running the the ball. You you're gonna have a one two punch from Dalvin Cook and Brees Hall that is, I I think you know if if I'm if I'm Salah and, and kind of what we saw a little bit during this game was treat it like the Falcons, treat it where it's like hey. We're just going to run the ball like crazy and and try to protect Zach Wilson and um, take take limited shots. Exactly. I I think Dalvin Cook gets a ton of work. I think Brees Hall gets a ton of work. And you know who just... got twenty two percent of snaps in that game? Tell me. Not Brees Hall, not Dalvin Cook. Michael, Michael Carter. Carter. Michael Carter. Mm. And I don't know if the, I didn't watch go back and rewatch that film to know if that was package related. Kyle, I don't know if you know if that was. It particular did. third downs or two minute warnings, but he had some targets. Yes, yeah, and I'm not did. saying that in any way, shape, and form to endorse Michael Carter. I'm saying, ooh, yeah, it might gross. get in the way of some of the Dalvin Cook. I mean, Dalvin Cook had 16 opportunities in last week's game. I, I, I think he stays around there. I think he stays 15 plus opportunities every game for a long while, at the very least. Eventually, Brees Hall will, I think, dominate the necessity like by necessity he'll just dominate the uh market share but you're you're gonna have half a year here where dalvin cook gets 15 opportunities a game now this week the dallas cowboys you know i mean that's what you're gonna need to do against the cowboys the cowboys weren't good against the run last year they're just you can't let them get up oh, if gonna, they get a lead be, they're gonna be good this week yeah i mean if, they're gonna be good this week against the run because they know what they need to stop that's yeah. the worry and by the way I don't know if this is alarming, Jason. If you take away Brees Hall's 83-yard run, <laughs> uh -huh. he only averaged 4.88 to carry. <laughs> oh, darn it. <laughs> Which I know at one point he was averaging 55, 55 oh. a carry after two carries. Yeah, right? that was real nice. You were enjoying it. But no, and you know 20 yards of reception. Is it weird to have no Brees Hall shares but have some Zach Moss shares? I, how yeah, dare you? I have does... Brees Hall shares. I just don't have as many as I should have. No, but like for this year. Not well, like, I'm talking about this year. I'm saying, but you didn't draft him. You, two I years think ago. you have the same amount, like same amount of Zach Moss and Brees Hall. Yeah, one to one ratio. No, I got two Brees Hall shares <laughs> oh. in my leagues. Double. All right, that is it for today's show. Check out the community at jointhefoot.com. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.